Hey guys, Mark from Gunplay Network here, and today I'm bringing you my review of the RG Strike Freedom. Big thanks to Hobbyco for sending the kit my way to review for you. Hopefully you enjoyed the preview. This has been a challenging kit somewhat, guys. Just posing it, um, I had a lot of issues with mine where the waist seems to be quite loose. The, uh, I guess the beam sabers on the side skirts, the, oh, just the, the backpack is quite heavy. It won't stand on its own, but before we get into all of that, let's take a quick look at the gold frame in all of its beauty, standing there without the armor on. You notice I'm doing this in reviews now. It's a chance to give you a look at the full inner frame before you add all the armor onto it. It's not that hard to assemble, you just skip the armor pieces. So taking a look at this, you can see it's kind of like a dull plasticky gold, not like the chrome plated gold that you get for the wing set, unfortunately, but it would be quite hard to do this on the frame. I will of course be painting this, but for the rest of you, you could throw a panel wash over it and that'll bring out some of the lovely detail you can see there. And here he is, fully armored up, spinning around on an action base. And no mistake guys, he will be on an action base. If you want to get this kit to stand anywhere, it's much like the RG Strike, the Ale Strike, you will be using blue tack on the feet. Stop that there. And here he is. So this is kind of like full burst mode with the Super Dragoons uh, up in the, well, the up position. The action base is definitely, definitely a must, guys. He looks much better in the air. You get with this kit in terms of accessories, two hands close fists that are on the kit, two trigger finger hands, as you can see there, for the rifles. And the rifle opens up as you would have seen in the preview and these two rifles pull that back section off can interconnect and make a much longer rifle. You also get two of the RG hands. Now I use this for the beam saber. It works quite well for holding it. I used a little bit of blue tack to keep the beam saber in place, but these have the manipulators, the three into index finger and thumb. If you've built uh, uh, real grades before, then you'll be used to them and they can be challenging, but can also help. You also then get two open expressive hands to go with your two closed hands that you have. You can currently see in the background of the kit. You get two beam saber effect parts. Now this can also, as you would have seen in the preview, the two beam saber hilts on the side skirts can be turned into that there. You then get a clear shield. Now the shield can mount on either forearm when you remove the red piece. The reason mine is still clear is because I have not applied the sticker to it. So as you can see kind of there, sorry for the brightness, it's hard to get clear, right? There you go. So you can see the sticker will go directly behind it and it gives it kind of an effect, but I'll personally paint mine with a clear blue or a clear red paint. The rest of the stickers are just some for the frame and a butt ton of caution markings. So some metallics, some eyes, and a ton of caution marking. You will also get the Kiri Yamato, or Jesus Yamato, as he's also known. Uh, in the, only Seed fans will get that joke. Uh, he'll, you know, you'll also get him, and I've shown you a painted version of him with the RG Owl Strike, uh, pretty much the same figure. So, um, cutting corners on that one, I guess. Uh, maybe a different version might've been nice. You also see weapon wise, you get two rail guns on the side skirts with the two beam saber effect parts on the side skirts, sorry, the beam sabers. Another accessory I guess you could call is the Super Dragoons, which can open up like that. You were seeing the preview in full burst mode fully opened. They can all be removed, so there's eight of those, um, and then they just close up and go down like that. You could remove them if you had eight clear pieces of string to pose that with and have them off an action base three, four, five. Um, let's take that off there. And there's the piece that will hold him to an action base for you in gold as well. So the rail guns on the side, the super dragoons will close down and you can kind of shape the wings into anything you want. Butterfly, uh, open, um, you can move them back and forth a bit. 
and my beam saber hilt has fallen off again. That's a common occurrence there, guys. You'll notice when you want to pose this kit, things fall off everywhere. The backpack, the side skirts, the rear skirts, anything you touch, it can all come off. I don't know if that's just my kit, but there's a lot on there. Weak waist will also not help that. So, as you can see here, if you try and get him to stand without blue tack, boom, straight over. Okay, so there's your uh, chrome plated gold you can see in the wing set there. And we'll take that off for now. Now, if you don't have the backpack on, he's very Strike-esque, which I guess is why it's called the Strike Freedom. Um, I heard it was in name, a tactical sounding name, but I think he resembles the Strike quite a bit. He will stand on his own without the backpack. It's just a ton of plastic, guys. You couldn't expect that to stand up on its own. I did get it to stand and rotate around with blue tack on the bottom of his feet, holding him upright, which means he's got good ankle support. Okay, so now if we're taking a look at articulation, head will go down, a little bit back, and no side to side. On a side note, this is the strongest V-fin I've ever seen on a Gundam. It did not come off once during my review, which is A++. Head will go all the way round, no obstructed by the shoulder or neck. The shoulders will pop off, given a moment's, you know, touching. They're just a little hoop horseshoe shape that holds them to the shoulders like most real grades. But these I found came off extremely, extremely, you know, easily. And just whenever you went to move the backpack, they came off. The arms without the backpack on will go all the way around. With the backpack on, you'll have to move it a bit out of the way to get that. They do also pull forward. And you get a nice amount of lean forward if you wanted to give him, you know, holding the weapons, that sort of stuff. It all helps with those little articulation gimmicks. See some thrusters on the shoulders there, some ventilation. This is my waist joint issue I mentioned. There you go. They, it just comes apart so easily. It needs like a locking mechanism on it. The shoulder, sorry, the elbow and forearm will do a full 90 degree bend. And there's good amounts of frames showing everywhere here. The arms will go all the way up to parallel. And the fists are just on a ball joint, so uh, on all of them. So they'll just rotate around and move a little bit. Arm will also turn the whole way around. Not that you ever really need that, but can help with posing. The waist is quite loose on mine and just comes apart at a moment's notice. I think it's quite a weak connection. Um, let me know if, in the comments below if you guys had the same. The beam sabers. I had a great, there you go, that one just popped off without even really touching it. You can turn a little side to side there on the waist, but not a, a great deal. Shoulder came flying off again. Now, as a point of articulation, the really cool, the rail guns slide around behind the actual, and this gimmick works, they slide right around onto the back. So when you want to store the beam rifles on the side skirt, that little peg there hooks into there, and that little hook you pull around, and bang, you can have four weapons stored on the body. Good thing he's on action base though, because he would definitely not stand with all that on. The articulation of the rail guns, they just fold out like that, and then have a cool gimmick they have a gold frame inside them as well. Bang, you just pull that open and you get like a firing position for them. Unheard of guys, even in most real grades, I just think this was really good for the line early on what this midway through out of 28, 26. I can't remember real grades, but this was midway through. So yeah. front skirt, they're individually placed like the rear skirts will go all the way up. You can then move the leg up open up the knee and you get some cool frame showing through there. The feet have a great amount of articulation and will point all the way down, helping you with those flying poses. The feet will turn all the way around. Not that you'd want to, but they can. And the armor's opened up on the side, so great. Now, you can actually with this one, because the, the rear skirts have a good amount of articulation despite popping off quite easily, they can go up and then the leg can actually go all the way back. So if you were doing some kind of insane aerial acrobatics with this kit, as he's been known to do in the anime, you can actually get the leg all the way back up and the knee curved around. 
Just really cool articulation there. Now the backpack, that's the peg connector for the backpack on that uh, front side of it. If we turn the kit around, you'll be able to see that just heads in there. Really easy. It seems strong. I mean, if it's up on an action base, not an issue, but it's the moment you touch it, it comes off. Now there are some articulation in the wing itself, uh, some vent details there on the back, gold detail there, and under the vents as well on the sides. So this thing is just detail plus. The wings will turn the whole way around. They're just on pegs. As you have seen, the Dragoons open up. And then if you're really cautious with this guys, cause I have heard they snap, you can actually turn this that way and that way and do like an opening flapping motion like a butterfly. I'm not hundred percent sure why, but it just kind of gives it the look of flying faster, I guess, cause the wings have gone backwards. I showed some photos to the guys from GM. They're like, no, you idiot. You have to have the wings open up when he's in the display cabinet, even with the Dragoons open, because that's full burst mode. So, close those back up. Now, just pull that up, open it up, and that's it. That's the Super Dragoon open. So you can see there's kind of like gold detail locking mechanism. There's gold inside that part of the frame as well. So you can display these individually, like with the Dragoons flying, um, but that's all uh, individual purchases. I don't know if there's a P Bandai kit for that. I just assume you grab an action base uh, four or five, like I have, and then you'll have to get some clear plastics or something to hold them up to make them look like they're flying. And that's it. The backpack just goes on there. And that's the completed, I guess, standing in a hangar mode. Here he is in another pose for you guys. The color detail and separation is really good on this. You got a couple of different uh, whites, grays, middle ground blue, a navy, royal navy blue kind of thing, red, uh, a couple of different golds, yellow. Uh, it's great color on this. And like I said, for posing, he looks really good on an action base. So. Get yourself one if you haven't. They're actually not as expensive as you think. If you're buying heaps of them, probably. But Hobbyco do sell those as well. And there he is with the rifle stored on. And you now have him in a flying beam saber with the shield pose as well. And there's that little red connector holding it on. All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining me for this review. I'm going to say if you're a Seed fan, it's definitely, definitely a buy. If you're a Strike fan, Kira Yamato fan, definitely buy this kit. Um, Freedom, Strike Freedom, if you're in any of that stuff, you'll love it. Uh, for me personally, I could take it or leave it, but having built it now, I realize how much fun this kit actually was to build. It was a bit ho-hum on the backpack. It got a bit you know, repetitive building eight of those Dragoons for the wings um, and four little bits of the wings to attach together. But overall, once I've got this guy in my kit, uh, sorry, in my display stand, he looks really good in the cabinet with the rest of my RGs. And he'll look even better once I've painted up that gold frame and put on some uh, stickers and caution markings. So big, big thanks to the guys at Hobbyco. Remember to head over to www.hobbyco.com.au. Check out their website. Uh, remember to check out our footage um, from the GBWC, which uh, Hobbyco helped uh, support and sponsor So with Bando. And as always, enjoy building and thank you very much. Catch you later.